more than 600. Bible scholars tell us that's how many religious laws you'll find in the Old Testament. So I'd like to begin by asking for a show of hands this morning. If you have faithfully obeyed all of the more than 600 commandments in the Bible, would you please raise your hand? No takers, huh? Okay, well, let me ask then, how many of you know what the 600 plus laws found in the Bible are? If you could please stand and just recite maybe the first hundred for us. What's going on here? How do you expect to get to heaven if you don't obey God's law? And what chance do you have at eternal life if you don't even know His commandments? The answer, I think, is clear. If salvation is based on law-keeping, you literally don't have a prayer. If you won't take the time to study and know God's law, how can you expect anything but hell? Well, the answer is you can't expect anything but hell. If salvation is by law, then those who don't keep the law And worse, those who don't even know the law are doomed. And that would include you and me and everyone else on earth. Lost, doomed, hopeless, bound for hell. Unless we've misunderstood. Unless those 600 plus Bible laws were never intended to save us at all. Unless God's way of salvation has nothing to do with our faithfulness to Him, but everything to do with His faithfulness to us. Unless salvation is rooted in God's mercy instead of our works. Unless forgiveness comes by God's grace instead of our obedience. And gratefully, that's exactly what the book of Romans reveals to be true. In Romans chapter 1, we learn that God's gospel, that is God's good news, is the gospel of His Son, Jesus, who died and who rose again. This gospel, Paul tells us, is the power of God for salvation, not for everyone who obeys, No, but for everyone who believes. In Romans 3, the apostle explains that by works of the law, no human being will be justified in God's sight. Since through the law comes only the knowledge of sin, our sin. No, on the contrary, because Jesus died on the cross to pay our sin penalty and because he rose from the grave so he could share his life with us, Paul declares, we hold that one is justified, that is, one is forgiven of their sins by faith apart from works of the law. But does this salvation, this salvation that comes by grace alone, through faith alone in Jesus, does this mean that we as Christians have no law to keep? And does the fact that Jesus paid our sin penalty in full mean that we as believers have no debt to pay? Well, that's the question Paul answers for us in Romans chapter 13 in verses 8, 9, and 10. Romans 13, verses 8 through 10. If you have your Bible, turn with me this morning. Romans 13, beginning with verse 8. And before we read, let's remember that in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul has instructed us to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God. Paul has called us to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And now in these chapters that follow, including chapter 13. 
Paul is showing us what this transformed life, what this renewed mind looks like as it plays out in our life as believers. So now follow as I read Romans 13, verses 8 through 10, because here Paul reminds us that after we have been saved by grace alone through faith alone, there does in fact remain at least one law that we must obey. And there does remain at least one debt that we must still pay. Romans 13, verse 8. Paul writes to us as believers. And he says, Owe no one anything. Owe no one anything except, except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. So let me say this again. So we're all together on this. Paul is writing these words to people who are already Christians. He's writing to people who've already been forgiven. He's writing to people who have already been saved. And here's what that means. God's command to love each other is not the way we get.